Okay, so we did this other set of videos where we created a, um, a way to help like name your dog or cat or whatever it is that you've got. So we made these little functions. So for example, whenever I run this, I say, I want to make a dog. So I make a dog and it comes up with a name for my dog and it gives me a picture of my dog and yay, it's, it's fantastic and I can run this over and over. I can name a cat and you know, we just came up with little games to do this and I can't decide and so it's great. Okay, so um, this is what these look like. Um, we did put them together in a different um, video that I can link below. Um, but basically we just came up with a whole bunch of different um, syllables and threw them together to make animal names. So I thought that clearly the next best thing to do is to go put all of these into uh, an app on MATLAB to use the MATLAB app designer. So this actually works really, really well. So I can go app designer, Woo. okay, and it's going to pop this up. Um, sometimes it'll pop up and it'll say, you know, you'll actually have to click new. Um, maybe I can get that to happen. Do, 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 do. There we go. Blank app. Okay, so this is basically what a um, an app would look like, and for some reason I don't have that, but there we go. So uh, you can see off to the left all these little kinds of things that you can put into an app. Uh, buttons, checkboxes, all kinds of stuff. We're going to do something pretty straightforward. Um, we're just going to recreate kind of what we have with a title and probably some radio button groups. So. Um, if you get confused, remember checkboxes like this, you can have a whole bunch of checkboxes and you can check them all at once. So you can actually run this. You can just drag and drop and run it right away. It's super easy. I'm gonna save mine as um, pet game, I guess. Um, but if I run this, um, with checkboxes, you can check more than one. In the button group, you can only check one at a time. So obviously we can either do a cat or a dog or something else, um, but not all three at once. This is super straightforward compared to if you're used to doing this with a GUI. So I can just come in here and I can say dog. And it's really awesome because you see it automatically renames it as dog button. And if you're like, I have no idea what you're doing. That's okay. And that's the beauty of this app designer is you can just kind of play and kind of do what feels intuitive and it pops up. So dog, cat, now it's called cat button. And button three is I don't know, I can't decide. Um, so like right now, this is called button group. I can just double click it and I can change its name to pick an animal and we're good to go. All right. So if I'm thinking about this, see, I can hit run at any point when I'm designing this and be like, oh, look, it's doing stuff. Um, and although I could probably set it up to where it would act just by me selecting here, I'm going to make it go ahead and not do anything until I hit this button. So I'm going to pick this button, I can double click it, and I can say make name. And see now it's make a name button, and it's really great because if I change it to something else, swinky face, it's now called swatinky face button. So I'll just go back to, actually I can probably control Z, and go back to make a name. It's beautiful. Look how fantastic it is. So look, I can hit run. And I can hit buttons or radio buttons and I can hit big buttons and nothing happens because I didn't tell it to do anything. But I feel like all of a sudden I'm like this master programmer. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go in here and actually make it do something. <laughs> so um, what you can do is there's a couple of ways to get there, but probably the most intuitive, at least for me, is to right click and say callback. So you'll see that says something add button pushed function. So it's a little awkward what they call it, but it kind of does what it sounds like. When you push the button, you want it to do something. So you right click, add push button function callback. And it takes you to this scary page. If you're scared, just go back up to here where it says design view and you can get back to the normal page. Or you can go back to code view and go back to the scary page. But you shouldn't be scared because see, no matter what I try to do here, anything that's in gray, <laughs> MATLAB won't let me mess it up because it knows what I do whenever I get my whole hand on code and then I get it all broken and stuff like that. So um, it's pretty great because it's kind of super duper hard to mess it up. Okay, now you'll see in your app layout over here on the left, you can still see your apps in case you forget, oh, I forgot what this is called or whatever. Um, so you can kind of come in here and be like, oh, this is cat button. 
and see how its value is zero and its text is cat. And then I can click on I don't know and its value is I don't know or its text is I don't know and its value is nothing. So you can just do stuff like that. So essentially what I want to do is I want to know which one of these things has been selected. So um, let's see. Parent child callback da 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 da. Well, basically what I can do is probably the easiest thing is just to come over here and instead of worrying about asking this which thing has been selected, I can just go directly here and see what the value is. So let's see, how can I do this? Let's do it this way. I'm gonna say um, animal choice, you just make up my own little variable name, um, equals um, ooh, maybe I'll do it this way. App pick. See if I go app dot. So everything in the app designer is saved in a file basically called app. So you see that's app dot UI figure. UI stands for user interface, but everything is called app dot whatever. So I can be like app dot <laughs> pick animal button and it already starts to type it out for me. If you hit tab, it just fills it in for you. And if I hit dot again, it'll tell me what the selected, here's all my things that it's like, hey, why don't you do this? I can say selected object. So that way I actually don't have to go through and look at each one of these individually. I can just say, which one of these has been selected? Okay, so let's just show you what happens whenever I run this. Now you might find it helpful to actually pull out MATLAB in the background so you can see this um, regular command window thingy and then have your little thing going here. So if I click dog, make a name, see how it says radio button dog, value one text dog. Make a name, value one text cat. So that's the one selected as cat. And if I click, I don't know, then it says text is, I don't know. So I can click on this and it will tell me which one of those things has been selected. And I really didn't have to know that much. I just kind of had to look at the tool tips as I went along and it just kind of suggested. So I'm gonna show you that again. All right, so my animal choice is gonna be app dot and I'm gonna type in pick animal button group. I just type in pick. Now, if you get the capitalization and spelling wrong, then everything goes down the drain very quickly. So again, I recommend just start to type it and then hit tab, because it'll fill it in the rest of the way. Then hit dot to go to the next property that you want. And you can come down here and you can either start typing selected, hit the down button and hit tab, or you can just select it with your mouse. All right, so, what we're going to do now is we are going to switch. So we're going to switch on animal choice. And if I start typing animal again, um, I can just see the ant word animal choice come up and I can hit tab and it'll fill it up for me. So in the case that it says dog, then the animal value is one, right? Because remember I said one is dog. In the case that it says cat, oops, um, animal value equals two. Now it's not preloading those because it's not defined outside the switch case, but that's okay. And I can say otherwise animal value equals three. And so I'm going to switch on that. So it's just letting me know that this might be unused. I'm like, yeah, I know. Okay, so now. Actually, if you want to, you can unsuppress these and see what it looks like whenever you run it. Oops, I missed one. So I can go put you and then I can run it. And I can be like, remember, I need to pull up my um, command window over here just to get an idea of what I'm looking at. And I can say, dog, dog, dog. Oh man, cat, 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 cat. Oh, none of these are working, so it's not getting this. And then I remember why. Because whenever you're doing uh, comparisons in MATLAB, a lot of times it doesn't like, um, whatever you call it, it doesn't, it's, it's not comparing what you think it's comparing. So remember that the animal choice, this is an easy fix actually, um, the animal choice, so if I come over here and I look, and it says that it's radio button value one text dot. So I'm actually comparing this entire thing with the value dog when I really just want to be comparing the text of all of that. So easy peasy fix. I can come over here and instead of say selected object dot T E X T 
tea, I think, should we? And let's try this again. So, make a me. Yay, now it's working. So I hit dog, animal value is one. See, this is the thing that's really crazy is you think you do everything right and then you forget one thing and it's all wrong and then you fix it and then it's all right again, which is just fantastic. <laughs> okay, so now I have this name. Or at least I'm ready to go ahead and use my function. So I know it's working. I can suppress all my stuff and do ba do 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 do. All right, now. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. So you can make functions um, and add functions to your code. Um, so yeah, I don't wanna do, um, I hit Control Z. But, um, so MATLAB likes you to put functions inside, which you are welcome to do. Since I already have them here, I'm just gonna leave everything outside and we'll deal with making internal functions on another day. But right now I'm just super happy I have functions at all. So um, I'm gonna leave them there. All right, so what I'm gonna now do is, it's pretty straightforward, I just have to call the functions that I've already written. So I can be like pet name equals, what do we call it, um, first name generator, and see it's already typing up because it's looking in the folder, it's like, oh yeah, you have it there. First name generator, animal value, and it knows exactly what I want, just hit tab. So that's gonna be my pet name, and then my file, name it seems like as I've already got one called file name maybe so I'm gonna call it pet file name and then it's file name generator hit tab and animal value hit tab and it's all ready to go so I'm just gonna run this one more time and make sure I'm getting what I'm expecting to get so again looking at my command window and I'm going cat and it's got my kitty cat's name and a kitty cat picture. I don't know. And dog. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to make this actually show up in this picture, which is not <laughs> terrible at all. So you'll remember that over here in my design view, I have this little thing right here. So if I click on it, I'm reminded it's called UI axes. But if I don't like the name for that, I can just double click it and I can say pet picture. I like capitalizing my second words in variables. You don't have to do that, but now it's called pet picture. Isn't this great? Okay, so now what I wanna do is again, whenever I hit this button, if you wanna go back to the callback, you can either go to the code view directly or from the design view, you can right click and you can say, go back to the callback. So I'm gonna suppress this because we know that they're working. Okay, so now what we want it to do is again, looking over here, we see that we've got this pet picture it has something called title.string. So we want that name to show up as the title. So we can say app.petpicture, and you can again hit tab.title. Now this is a little tricky because it's not just title, it's title.string. So just like this says title.string. Um, and that's probably because there's other things called titles, maybe. Title, yeah, see there's title font size, title font weight, title dot string, title other step. So we have to specifically say, I just see how I changed the direction here, alphabetical view to group view. Group view is a little bit easier. So dot string, um, we want that to be the new pet name. All right, so hopefully we can get that working. So, all right, we got our puppy dog names, our cat names, and our indecisive names. So the last step that we want is we want to show that picture on the um, title, or on the on this little um, thingy, this axis. Okay, so this is a little tricky. It took a little bit of Googling to remember how to do this, but there's a function called I am show. So I am show. And if you open it up, it's gonna give you the ideas of like, okay, so what do you wanna put in there? Um, I wanna put in, um, what did I call it? File name or pet file name, pet file name. And then I'm gonna specifically tell it to put it into the parent. Um, and I forget why this is a thing, um, but then I wanna put it into app dot um, pet picture. So basically, I want to put the file name into the main pet picture thingy. I don't know why it's like that. 
I feel like there should be a more organized way of doing this and I'm just not paying attention or something because there should be like a yeah I don't know but let's just see what happens that's how I can get it to work and so who am I to question all right so dog yay all right so I've got my little pictures in here of my kitties and my puppies and the um, images that go with it now it's silly that I have x and y that's an easy fix I can just come over here click on my title go over here to my x and y lip strings if you just delete those they go away see easy peasy hit run and they're gone if you don't like the fact that it says title you can say question marks Oh, come on now. Click away from it. Run again. There we go. So now it says question marks. Um, maybe you don't like that it starts with an axis looking thing. So actually something you can do is you can, I'm gonna steal this line of code right here. Um, this one and I guess I'll just steal all of this for a second. Um, if you go into pet name, you can actually tell it to do something whenever you start the, the program or start the app. So you can go to callbacks, add startup function, and then I'm just gonna put that stuff underneath the pet name. Um, but instead of doing any kind of a file name, I'm just gonna specifically do the random one. Um, so remember three was like our indecisive dude. So um, now whenever I run it, see this is gonna happen right away. So it'll all run it and it'll automatically give me this and then I can pick a name or generate something like this or generate something like this. So it's really fun. You can do all kinds of neat stuff with it. Um, you know, you can make these things bigger. Um, you can make the app itself. There's this little thing down here. You can make this smaller so it fits better. Um, and then it does something strange. I don't know why it's doing that. So actually I'm going to control Z it back out of there. Um, why are you doing that? That's weird. Um, okay. No! Okay, this is what I get for playing around. Um, so you've got yourself, uh, just a little game here that you can play. You can click on the background and you can change the color. There's a place that you can change the color here. You know, if you're feeling particularly obnoxious, you can pick colors for these things in the background. Um, they're somewhere over here. Font color, maybe you can't change the background. Surely you can change the background. Well, anyway, you can play around with that and do stuff with it. Um, you can change the fonts um, if you're super desperate from Helvetica to avant-garde. That doesn't even look like I've done anything. But anyway, you can go play with all of these things and make them do kind of neat um, you know, whatever you're interested in. So um, you can make them look really obnoxious and silly and um, change the sizes and all that kind of stuff. Really, oh, there we go, background color. I can make this yellow, yay! And I can make my button. Surely I can change the color of my button. Button is now blue. So you look at this beautiful piece of art that I've made where I can just come up with animal names. So um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an introduction to the app designer. It's way easier to use than the guide, the GUI, the graphical user interface that um, I kind of was really hesitant to get rid of for a long time. I really hung on to that. And I can't believe it took me so long to start playing with this because this is so much easier. And like I said, I love that it won't let you mess with stuff and break it. <laughs> so um, it's a lot better. And I love that whenever you change things, names on one thing, it automatically updates. It's, it's super fun. So I hope this gave you something to play with and that you come up with lots of amazing puppy and kitty and mere cat or whatever these are <laughs> pictures. <laughs>